thank you for tuning in to the Happy Hearts Podcast with your host, Becca. Rate and subscribe as we power you to live with love. Hello and welcome to the Happy Hearts Podcast powering you to live with love. Um, we're here today with Lauren Bruno, um, aka Hypno, Hypnolo- Hypnologic, sorry if I'm not saying that right, I'm butchering it. <laughs> um, hypnologic on Instagram um, and today we're discussing reducing the fear of change, um, what changes and why uh, we fear it. Um, we'll also be looking into the difference between fear and phobias um, and a little bit about how our subconscious mind works. And yeah, it's going to be a really interesting topic to be covering. Welcome, Lauren. How are you? Thank you so much, Becca. Thank you for having me. And yes, these are some of my favorite topics, the subconscious mind and fears and you can find me at Hypnolution on um, Instagram or TikTok. So it is um, tricky <laughs> linguistics. <so. laughs> yeah, sorry about that. Um, yeah, tongue twisters for me. <laughs> I know. I'm so excited to be here today. Thank you for having me. Oh, you're welcome. You're welcome. Thank you for agreeing to come on and have this discussion with me. <laughs> oh, um do you want to tell everyone a little bit about who you are and what it is that you do then? Most definitely. So my name is Lauren Bruno and I'm a hypnotherapist that specializes in transforming our pain into power through um, trauma release and pain release, guilt release, and then empowerment. So um, looking at different fears and fear-based challenges are really interesting and and why we fear change. Um, Cause we really are habitual creatures by nature and change is something other than what we've known. It's our unknown. So change can be uncomfortable. It can be a little bit of a resistance, but it's okay to have that resistance and it's okay to be uncomfortable. Um, once we embrace change, it's really becoming more comfortable with the idea of being uncomfortable a little bit. <laughs> yeah, definitely. I, I agree. Like, um it's it's only just been like a a recent thing for me to be comfortable with change and and the unknown um I had so much fear around it and I didn't realize how much it controlled my life to be honest with you um and it's it's been so freeing to realize that um change can be a good thing Mm -hmm. (laughs) Um, but why do you think that we fear change? Why is it a habit that we all have? Uh, it's really our subconscious are our habits. So a lot of what hypnotherapy works with is our subconscious mind mm-hmm. and our conscious mind are our analytics and reasoning and willpower and really the logical part of our minds. We build our subconscious through our childhood, a lot of different instances from our childhood and other past, either pain points or just different instances. So mm-hmm. once we build up our patterns and our habits into our subconscious and our real belief systems, it's really ingrained there. It's ingrained in a large chunk of what's running the show in our minds. So I think a lot of the reasons we fear change is because of that uncomfort. For me personally, um, I had a lot of anxiety and still continue to have anxiety. And anxiety for me is a little bit of a, a buzzing in the in the stomach and the chest. Mm-hmm. Um, and I used to be so afraid of it. I if I went to speak in public or speak in front of a large group, I would say I can't do this, and I would physically run away from the situation. Yeah, <laughs> I get that. I, I get that as well. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and it wasn't until I realized that anxiety isn't that scary of a thing. I could still feel it and show up for myself. That's when I started embracing change a lot more. Yeah, I get, I, I totally understand. Like, um, 
I, one thing that worked for me is um, recognizing that I didn't have to fight the anxiety and I didn't have to fight the fear. Um, like it's a response. Um, it's like, it's natural. So, um, and it's there for a reason. Yes, we don't really need to use it as much anymore in in like the age that we live in, but it's there to help us to survive. Mm-hmm. Um, so fighting against it seemed to be, um, you know, not really that logical <laughs> um, mm-hmm. for me. Um, and then when I realized that and I decided to become friends with it, like I physically I, like out spoke out loud that I no longer fought against it and that I wanted to become friends with it. That's when my outlook changed. Um, mm. That's not saying that I have rid myself of anxiety and I've rid myself of fear fully. Um, it's I've accepted that they're part of who I am and that when I need them to be there, they will come. Um, And that sometimes when I don't need them to be there, they'll still come. And it's my job to just accept that as being part of who I am and that it's okay to feel those things and to let yourself ride it out and come through the other side. Um. One thing that I did wonder, and um, I don't know if you could answer this for us, Lauren, um, when in our life do we develop, um, you know, this instillment of fear? Mm, That's a great question. Um, And I love how you mentioned that you made friends with your anxiety and you kind of thought of it as a separate part of yourself. Mm -hmm. Um, But fears can come from many different times of our lives. Usually fears um, come through childhood. So it's from what our family sees as a situation. We start to adapt how our caregivers brought us up, um, scarcity mindset. Really common fears are um, public speaking, fears of loss, fears of rejection, fears of failure. Um, And we adapt that so much into our subconscious that we get fearful to even go for those things or even fears of intimacy and sexual performance. This can be all based on um, how we were brought up through childhood. So usually we understand why a fear is there. Um, And if we don't, it may be attached to some deeper root causes and you just search a little bit more why the root behavior is there and where it stemmed from either. If it stemmed from childhood, then, um, You don't always know a specific scenario, but you might know how old you were when you developed a certain fear. And personally, for me, um, just being brought up with a household of anxiety and um, highs and lows, it created that within myself. So it was basically rewriting my own scripts to feel how I wanted to feel. And yeah. phobias come a little bit later in life. So phobias are a little bit different and you don't always know why they're there. Um, you might have anxiety and it could be related to blood sugar. But yeah, like you were mentioning before also, where if you're angry at yourself for having that, it creates this circular pattern. It almost creates this repetition of a loop where um, you have a fear and then you're angry at that fear. Mm -hmm. So that the fear just keeps on perpetuating itself because you feel that guilt. It creates a loop. So once we allow ourselves to even feel our emotions, allow those emotions to flow through us, that's when um, we don't need to control the emotion as much. Yeah, I definitely feel like control and fear are good friends with each other. Mm-hmm. And that relieving some of that, releasing some of that control over things that you cannot control um, mm-hmm. Or even being able to identify the things that you can't control um, does relieve some uh, fear. Um, I mean, you touched on what could lead us to fear and, you know, 
um, how even influences growing up, like our environmental factors, can uh, lead to our fears and anxieties. Um, um, what what kind of thoughts do you think like link into fear and um how can we change those thought patterns Mm, yeah a lot of our thoughts are what create the fears so if we think we can't handle something we might Mm. be that might be a block saying that we can't handle it or can't do it because a lot of the times we most definitely can it just takes a little bit of practice and work um other thoughts might be that um you don't want to be overwhelmed. So you already put that predisposition of overwhelm into whatever task is at hand. And so some of those fears could be related to just an overload, an overload of what's going on, not only internally, but externally in your world. Um, Something new that happens that it seems to be negative. We usually accept it as negative. And um, I think it's running off with those thoughts where it creates that whirlwind towards the future or the whirlwind towards the past and being able to just anchor in, accept that fear and just be with the present moment in that breath, take a moment, take a step back of everything. That's when you can really hone in on the fear and not run away with it. That's uh, brilliant. Um, I mean, like just building um, a better relationship, I think with um, fear and, how we perceive, you know, changes in our lives and the unknown. Um, it can just open doors and open worlds. I think. I mean, I'm I'm speaking personally, um, from you know, like my own journey. Um, I started off like in a really dark place and I I couldn't see any light you know um and a lot of that was based from um fears and the thought patterns around that um and building that better relationship with you know the different things that were going on and the lessons that I could learn from them and um you know letting go of the control and fearing less um I they really did help but um I mean like hypnotherapy it just seems so interesting to me and um I'm just wondering how can hypnotherapy help us to better our relationship with change and fear and uh, phobias and such Oh, yeah, most definitely. Um, Hypnotherapy is an amazingly powerful tool to um, create change in our fears, be able to rewire them. And so neuroscience is one of my favorite things that's proven that we can physically reshape our brains and be able to rewire our beliefs. So um, hypnotherapy mostly works with our alpha and theta brainwave states. This is Mm -hmm. when our minds are really relaxed and um, open to receiving different suggestions It also um, works with left or right brain dominance. We all have um, a spectrum of left and right brain. So our right brains are are really abstract, creative thinking, um, very physical. We are very, you know, um, outgoing and care about relationships a little bit more as a right brain dominant person. And a left brain dominant person would be a little bit more logical, a little bit more mathematical, might put the career or hobbies first versus relationships. And so it's different for each person. It's not really a one size fits all. It depends on who the person is, how they take in information and how they um, receive different information. But hypnotherapy can help us to basically make positive, beneficial self-improvement in our own thoughts. Um, It can help vent out dreams in different areas. So vent out working with our subconscious mind, also with our dreams, being able to vent out fears through our dreams um, and really be able to um, hone in on exactly what the fear is experiencing, what it feels like, and being able to rewire how you um, respond to that feeling really your response system to when you notice that a fear comes up. 
Um, and once you're consciously aware, aware of the fear, once you accept that you have it, that's when um, you can really make change. And once you believe that you can make the change and release the fear, that's when it's it's out. It's ready. You're ready to change it and ready to um, say that's behind the door. It's no longer part of you. It's no longer in your story anymore. It sounds and there's always, <laughs> Oh, yeah, definitely. Um, and really knowing that our knowns are our comfort zone and we're very comfortable. We get comfortable with things. So um, our thoughts and beliefs and those feelings associated with them are um, how we can hone in. But knowing that resistance is going to happen and actually when you feel resistance, that's usually right before the biggest change that you're going to see. Yeah, that's, I mean, it's definitely something I would like to explore. It's something that I've never done before and it sounds like it can be so helpful. And especially with, you know, our thought patterns around uh, fear and stuff and releasing through our dreams, obviously that's already been proven that that's um, a way of our subconscious mind making sense of what we're learning and uh you know, filtering out what we don't need and storing what we do need. And mm-hmm. um, so it's so interesting. Um, uh, one thing that I uh, wanted to touch on, Lauren, is um, the difference between fears and phobias. Like what is what makes them different? What is a phobia? Yeah. So um, a phobia usually comes a little later in life and you don't really know the reasoning for it. So um, you don't really understand the root behavior of it and why it's there. And it could be something like um, impending danger or just water and you don't know why. Um, Heights, different things could be associated with that. And it's because you associate the feeling already before you even see it you associate that feeling of fear before it even happens. Um, And it also could be your blood sugar could be affecting it. If increased anxiety happens, then that blood sugar is might like most likely be low and then um, panic attacks could occur. So as far as um, hypnotherapy working with phobias, we would get referral from a licensed medical health professional in order to work with something of an origin unknown um, if they came to us for that. And a fear is more logical. It's more, um, we accept the threat as something that we already knew why it was there. So childhood and um, we can help that much easier. So using different linguistic patterns and different ways to um, really just instill it in our subconscious mind, because our subconscious are really what our habits and our patterns and belief systems are. Um, So even just like, you got bit as a dog by a child. Um, You may have a fear of dogs now and you know why you have that fear. Um, And you've always had that fear. You get that panicky feeling when you get near a dog, Um, but maybe you want to change it now. Maybe your, your daughter or son is begging you for a dog and, and you're thinking, you know, maybe I need to release this fear of dogs now that I want to bring one into the family for my children. So that's where your conscious mind is aware that you have, um, this fear and you're ready to change it. You've come to the point where you're ready to make that change, but your subconscious mind still has that pattern, that repetition, that feeling associated with the fear. And so we can identify what the problem is. We know the root behavior. We know the problem. And all we have to do is reinstill it in the subconscious mind to reassociate that negative feeling and emotion that comes with the fear. Um, yeah. Like, um I'm so like shocked to find out that there's like physical symptoms to phobias like I didn't you know connect the two oh yeah um I have like a huge fear of pigeons for no reason at all Mm. (laughs) um (laughs) and I did I never really put the two together that there was uh, physical symptoms to phobias. Mm-hmm. Yeah, every emotional response we can create physical um, symptoms from it. Just like anxiety, when we feel anxiety, some people might feel it in different areas, but some people might 
clench up their shoulders. So then they have tense shoulders and maybe a pang in the heart, maybe some shakes and um, wiggles. Um, so that's an, um, a feeling that comes from an emotion. And just that in itself, knowing that in itself is what created my change in my own anxiety, um, being able to tap into those feelings and just kind of use different mindfulness tactics, meditation, hypnosis, and um, breath work, of course, to be able yeah. to. Yeah. Yeah. And this is why I think it's so important to be teaching it to kids now mm-hmm. um, because we could give them you know, the foundation of these kind of techniques that they can take into adulthood that Mm -hmm. could reduce um, the likelihood of them developing um, anxiety to a point where it's debilitating for them or that it's going to restrict them from living, you know, their full potential. Um, And it's really exciting to hear, um, you know, what's out there, what parents could access for their children um, uh, what age would you see a child um, you know to work with uh, around hypnotherapy I have only been working with adults um, 18 plus but okay but you can work with children as long as the parents are okay with it and signed off on it and so um, and as long as the child is willing and ready of course mm-hmm. um, and child therapy, they're actually more susceptible for change because they're younger. So they, um, their brains haven't fully developed and they can easily rewire belief systems much faster. Which is just a great place to start, really, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> yes. And I would love to hear more about Happy Hearts House and really your vision for bringing this conscious awareness to children and these tools and tactics. Um, well, myself, well, I have a lot of trauma um, and a lot of it does stem from childhood. I'm just working through mine now at 31 years old. Mm-hmm. Um, and I feel like working through it now, I feel I've gone back to being a child again. Um, mm-hmm. And... I'm learning about the world and I'm learning about how things work all over again. Like it's just refreshed. Mm -hmm. Um, And um, during my journey, um, I came to think, what if we could cut out all these years where we've, they have to struggle to find out where they need to work on in life what if we could cut out um a lot of the darkness um not to the point where they don't that they're you know living under a blanket but um to the point where it could make it easier for them to find the solutions Mm -hmm. um and um it also comes from um, a place of my own children suffering with trauma. Um, Ava, who everybody probably knows by now. <laughs> um, Ava is nine years old. She has um, autism spectrum disorder um, and has recently, most recently been diagnosed with um, dissociative identity disorder due to um, sexual abuse. Mm -hmm. Um, and she's been on her own spiritual journey um, and she came to me and she wanted to you know she wanted to help other kids she wanted to make sure that other kids felt less alone in their trauma Um, she wanted them to find the creative past that she had Um, Mm. and the community that she had that's helped her come as far as what she has within the last 12 weeks you know she's she can see the improvement in herself not just me uh, and it's like magic like and um 
so we just wanted to work together uh, with the community that we're in now to build a little community for families and the children so they could feel less alone, so they could learn the techniques that we've learned to overcome and to accept our lessons and to make life work for us instead Mm. of us working for life. Mm, That's beautiful. (laughs) So, yeah, that's basically where it all comes from. (laughs) Wow, definitely. And community is so important. Community that's open to being empathetic to others and our differences and playing with each other, really having the opportunity to um, use all these great energy healing tools in order to understand why we feel a certain way and sit with those feelings and know it's not our fault um, and really be able to embrace self-empowerment and improve ourselves through all of this. It's beautiful. Yeah, exactly. I just want to bring the community to the people that need it. Mm-hmm. Um, so, and we've benefited from it so much in so many ways. Um, Ava has never accept. Well, she's never said that she's wanted to, um, you know, communicate with the community and and share in the community and she's she she struggles with social interaction um and social communication so for her to want to do those things it's it's a b- massive improvement and I've seen it work for her I've seen it work for other children um and I just want to bring it to everybody everywhere at whatever level they need it really um and also this community has so many ways and means to help people mm-hmm. um just like you Lauren with the hypnotherapy um there's so much that could be done and like you said that children have the ability to reprogram themselves and uncondition themselves from the way that they've you know the sides of things that they don't really need necessarily to take forward into adult life and that to me is amazing and should be shared (laughs) so I'm really thankful for you coming on here and having this discussion and being able to um, show us all what hypnotherapy is and the benefits of it for us all Thank you so much, Becca. I appreciate you so much for bringing me on and being able to have this conversation because it's really needed to talk about and fear of change, really. Why do we fear the change? So it was an amazing topic to talk about and get a better understanding. And thank you so much again. Yeah, I feel so much more like open now and uh, have gained so much better of an understanding and I'm hoping that um for the listeners as well um I'm so grateful to have had you on today um and I hope that we can have you back one day in the future too um if anybody listening in today's discussion if you want to connect with Lauren Bruno um I have left all of her information on how to contact and connect with her uh in the description for this uh podcast and um once again I just want to thank you Lauren for coming on and you know discussing with us how hypnotherapy can you know positively change our ways of thinking about fear and phobias and um yeah thank you so much (laughs) yes thank you and um yeah just being gentle with ourselves along the way too that's always a great point to remember is we are where we need to be and as long as we keep wanting that growth and wanting to that change we'll be there we'll get there we'll be able to create those positive habits so thanks again Becca (laughs) yeah definitely um yeah 
what what she said. <laughs> uh, thank you guys for tuning in and um, I hope that you will be joining me in the next episode um, once again thank you everybody for listening and tuning in um, and we hope that you know you have loads of things to be grateful for and we'll see you next time I'm Becca and I've been your host today on Happy Hearts Podcast. Thank you so much for tuning in. I'll catch you next time. Until then, live with love.